Today we're testing how coconut water works in mead making. So let's get started. So I've made a lot of mead with regular water, but not with coconut water. I like drinking coconut water, but I haven't really tried it as a source of water for mead making. I've seen a lot of people ask this question, how does coconut water do in a mead? It's a known fact that there are some recipes out there that use it as the base liquid instead of normal water. I started by buying a ton of coconut water and getting some basic honey. So here's my recipe card for this mead. To make this, we mixed up our honey, coconut water, and yeast. I'm using the Lauvin 71B just because it's a clean fermenter and I think it'll do well with this brew. I used a drill to mix all of this up and I recommend getting one because it saved myself a lot of time and it'd save you a lot of time. After we had mixed up our base must, we took a gravity reading. The starting gravity was 1.090. So this will put us at about 11.9% ABV brew once we're done with fermentation. After we pitched our yeast, we waited about 24 hours and then added all of our Fermate O, which is our yeast nutrient. You can choose to do this all in the beginning or even stagger the nutrient schedule, but I just did it all at 24 hours. This took about four weeks to ferment and then we took another gravity reading. Our gravity reading after fermentation was 1.000. This means we're sitting at a 11.9% ABV brew. This brew definitely needed to be back sweetened, so we stabilized it with potassium sorbate and potassium metabisulfite. You can alternatively pasteurize if you'd like to do something different. After the stabilizers were in for 24 hours, we went ahead and back sweetened with 0.5 pounds of honey per gallon and then let it set a while longer. This brew ended up clearing naturally over the next month or so, so our final gravity was 1.018 and this was clear by the time we bottled it. So I went ahead and bottled it and I sent it to some friends for them to try. I had heard a comment that the coconut water has to age at least nine months to be good. So I wanted to put that to the test. I asked my friends to taste the mead once a month over the next nine months. I'd sent them nine bottles so they had plenty to taste over nine months. So here are the results I got from them. You'll notice that there are not nine tastings for each person. That's because we kind of all forgot to do the tastings over time. So there's a little bit of data there for you to check out. I pulled them into a Zoom call for the final tasting, and we gave our final notes. This entire time, they had no idea what they were tasting. I wanted to make sure that the grand reveal was at the end of this whole test, so they are tasting this whole thing blind for the past nine months. It's time to go to the final tasting and see if coconut water really does make a good mead. Welcome to the tasting. I have some awesome friends with me that have uh, gone through the grueling tasting that has been this event. I have Mandy and Kyle and Tony in person with me. Um, as I just told you guys, I have no plans to give you any information until this, the final moment, the last, whenever you just really wanna know. So, <laughs> we're gonna get started. Go ahead and pour yourself some. I never wanna know. Never wanna know. Yeah. You wanna be blind the whole yeah. time in life? Let it be mystery. Keep me, <laughs> keep me mystery. We have not, spoilers for everyone watching, um, there was supposed to be more tastings of this, but we have all voted to go ahead and, and finish it. This is a, for your records, a nine month old mead at this point. So that's the only bit of information I'll give you. Feel free to mm -hmm. smell, taste, indulge, I don't know. <laughs> Anybody got any uh, exciting opinions, notes on this? Tony's going Some, back to the books. Somewhere on my phone I have them. Excuse me while I... He keeps record. I mean, uh, they're on the Google form. I, could, I probably could have pulled them up for you guys. So, I, I have more than that. Let me see if I can... Oh, you kept there. detailed notes. Yeah, I have a few. My initial impression is that of a um, grandmother's, like, Werther's Candy... Um, with like a little bit of like lemon kind of citrusy perfume in the background. Um, and then there's like quite a bit of heat toward the finish. So kind of like a, a rum alcohol vibe. Um, okay. Yeah. A lot of butterscotch. Do you get a, I get a little bit of a salty note, so, like slight saltiness to this. So yeah, I, oh, I agree. Yeah. There's, there's definitely like a caramel, uh, aspect to it um the thing that i will say is like the most consistent as i'm tasting this now and when i tasted it the first time um is there's it's like got this like cola root thing 
like Sassafras. Mm. Yeah. Um, looking back at some mm. of these other comments that I had in here, like I had written that quite a bit. Actually. Mm -hmm. There's like a nuttiness to it. Um, and then like texturally, it's pretty, pretty round, like pretty oily. Yeah. I will say, um, for whatever reason, in the first, when we tasted it in August, I had written down like a banana runs thing. I don't know that I have that. You lost it. The banana is gone. <laughs> yeah, I, I definitely my my senses are a little muted yeah. right now. So. Yeah, I got more I got more um, clove and baking spice in the beginning. Um, mm -hmm. Kind of like probably uh, probably triggered by some um, kind of fruity esters and then some of the warming tones of the mead in general. So. I think that was um, contribution. I definitely agree with um, what Tony's been saying with like some of the oiliness and there's definitely like a, like a root of some sort in there. Uh, definitely warm. Hmm. And, and I think that a banana runs thing has more maybe translated to like banana nut bread. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. I definitely get like a banana vibe, but I also like, there's something about it that makes me think of like dandelion. There's a floral aspect to it for it's sure. The mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I, I will say, looking back at the notes prior to, um, one thing I noticed, and even tasting it again now, actually, I think taking a break from it and not having had it mm -hmm. in a little bit has probably helped. But I think the alcohol seems... I noticed that alcohol has gotten more in balance over time. Yeah. The alcohol in the beginning was pretty out of balance. Um, it was pretty overwhelming. And I think now it feels more like where it should be. It's still a little bit on top. It's still a little heavy, but I don't, I don't think it's as out of whack. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So going from maybe first tasting, if you remember, you don't necessarily have to remember your exact score, but if you were lightly remember it to now, how much of an improvement do you feel like there's been in the first tasting to, to now? Is it like a, you know, it went from a 30 to a 39? Is it like, it's things a 45, you know, call it good? Like So originally I had given it a 37. Okay. And I, I feel like I could probably confidently go to like 30, 38, 30, 39, 40 range. I, and I had some ranges in there, but I mean, yeah. that's, I don't feel like it's improved that much more. Okay. Um, but it's very good. Okay. I mean, okay. What do you guys think? Yeah, I mean, for me, it definitely improved. Like, I I believe my first number was either 32 or 33. And it's just mm -hmm. because of the heat really was the biggest thing. It was just very uh, alcohol heavy, I yeah. suppose. Um, but I definitely agree with Tony. I think now at this point, it is probably like a 38, 39 for me. Okay. So I, I think there was just a nice gradual... Mm -hmm. <laughs> increase Kyle what do you think yeah, yeah it's the kind of same story with me I think I was at the lower 30s um, to start maybe like a 35 or 36 the second or third time I had it and now I would say it's about 37 38 in that like higher 30s uh, below 40 um, I think that definitely the biggest thing that's changed is just the balance and roundness, uh, especially with the alcohol presentation. Um, it's still there. And um, it's interesting. Like I had a mead um, that my uh, that someone in my homebrew club gave to me. And he's like a year ago, this was like super fusel and really hot. And I could kind of taste like some resemblance of that, but it wasn't like blown out to scale. So I think it just like just um, the higher alcohols just keep um, breaking down and rounding out and incorporating into the actual product. Um, okay. yeah. And especially with this kind of flavor profile, I think it works really well with even a little bit of heat is um, not too distracting to the point of bringing it down into below 30s. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, th I think the alcohol um, presence was the it's a little bit weird because the alcohol really sat on top mm, mm. and everything else what i'll also say every time i had this each time i tasted it i drank the whole bottle it's really good mm. so it's just that alcohol would kind of catch up with you sometimes because it, it felt high even i don't know yeah. if it is or not but it's it like feels i think high. it's 12 or 13 probably okay it it, it 
And that's not crazy high, but no. sugar's in balance, acid is in balance. And I will say too, like the first night I had it and I, I drink it, um, was sitting tasting it and I was just like, man, it, it evolved qu quite a bit in the first half hour. Yeah. So it did okay. develop more complexity and, and became a little bit more interesting than it did when we first, when I first opened it. And even just smelling it again now, just getting out of the bottle, I feel like it is a little bit more, yeah. um, it's a little more active. So we've tasted it, we've judged it, so to speak. If this were a competition, I would have put this into the experimental category. And I'll tell you the key flavor profile you should be theoretically tasting for, and that is coconut. What? Yeah, I don't get that. Weird. So, <laughs> coconut? There is a tropical That's... element to it, and I thought you were going to say pineapple. Okay. Um, I'm not latching on to the coconut thing, but I know coconut can be kind of hard. So, zooming back in time a little bit, many moons ago, I posted a pina colada video, and <laughs> I detailed that you should not use coconut water in a brew to achieve a coconut flavor. That was my yeah. intent. I was saying, hey, this doesn't work, I've tried it. I, I received some commentary that I was blatantly wrong and that you needed to age, that coconut water is the, is the best thing to use to get coconut flavor and you have to let it age for nine months in order for it to be good. That's the, the caveat of using coconut water, but it achieves a coconut flavor. So, in my own mind, you know, I decided it was time. Let's go ahead and put it to the test. I bought a whole case of coconut water. So this is like a no true water. Coconut mead with orange, or coconut, wa coconut water mead with orange blossom honey. I think it was orange blossom. Correction on the screen. And um, I followed the instructions of the critic who, who told me how to do it. Fermented out, and then we back sweetened to about 1.010. I did no acid adjustments, and I put it in bottles. I put my SpongeBob meme label on it and sent it your way with the intent of tasting. So the big question here is, one, we've learned it got, it got better with age. I would agree. But do you taste the coconut? No. <laughs> no, what? Yeah, I'm so confused. <laughs> so here's the thing I think that's interesting. Um, I felt the cook because coconut water has an acidity. Yeah, there's so much about it that's in balance. Why I almost feel like you would be better off using like not coconut water, something else. Because I, um, it's not to say it can't work. Yeah, or it doesn't add value in some way or add some sort of adjustment. But I don't. Coconut water to me is not a super coconutty. It is. It doesn't taste like, like coconut, I, and I, that's an interesting fact. At least I feel. What do you guys think? This does taste like coconut water and honey. Like it has that, um, like Don't that lie. salinity to there. <laughs> do not lie I to think us. that helps the balance, but I think that, um, yeah, it, it's funny because I actually, somebody sent me a coconut mead that mm. had coconut water in it. And it, this did remind me of that quite a bit. And I'm like, I, I thought it was just a really unique, um, mm. honey that had like maybe some, maybe you like, uh, made a traditional and then like aged it in some sort of like salty barrel. I don't know. Yeah. Like, you I'm know, like, like those ones in the sea or whatever. <laughs> the saltiness is what gets me. I don't love there. There's like a salinity to it. That's like in the back that yeah, it throws me off. I like it. I don't know. I like the salty thing. Maybe I just don't like salty drinks. Uh, maybe that's my problem. I, I, as a, as I don't a, see it. I drink a lot of coconut water. Yeah. Like I drink it like almost every day. I'm not going to say don't use coconut water in mead making specifically. I right. think that it does hold value, but for the sake... It made something that was good. Yeah, but for the for the, the goal of adding coconut flavor, maybe that's not the intent. Now, the whole nine, you know, the whole tasting thing was part of that testing of how is this thing changing over time. And the uh, the intent of that person's comment initially was to say that if you drink it before X time, it's not going to be any good. Which, I, I think that's also debunked because the flavor profiles by month three were pretty good. Yeah. 
by I was going to say by about month three, between three and four. Yeah, it started. I noticed a big change from about, yeah, about month three to four. I was like, oh, the alcohol feels more balanced. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. I noticed that you're exactly right. Ha. Huh. It's interesting. I'm not sold on that, but, you know. You know what's fun? I'm not shouting out this person's name, but they also posted a similar video um, about two months ago sharing their experience with this. So I'm sure you can Google it and try and find wonder, it yourself. I wonder if you, um, you know, because coconut, if you use like Coco Lopez, right? That's like, um, not coconut cream, but it's cream cream of coconut, mm. I think, right? That's Coco Lopez, I think is cream of coconut. But it has fat in it. Yeah. And it, uh, yeah, and it I don't separates. Know. It's used in cocktails a lot. Oh, okay. But that's like, they can be really sweet, but that to me seems like it would be Right. I don't know. Guys, I've never made anything. <laughs> yeah, I feel like shredded toasted coconut would mm. work so much better than... And not that does. I've tried it, but... Mm. It does. I guess it depends on what you're going for. Well, What's I wish that? I had a bottle of my pina colada mead to share with you. Cause it's a, I use that in there. Thank you guys for being part of this tasting and trusting that I didn't send you poison. Because uh, I think it's very sketchy whenever I, I send you a bottle of... Or a box of bottles and say, I'm not telling you anything about this, but taste it and give me notes, so. I still get, I still think it's good, mm -hmm. I like it. It's very enjoyable. <laughs> I will, I'll repay you with uh, more mead that I will not be a mystery, how about that? I'll send something your way that will be <laughs> I like a, a payment for that, but thank you guys for doing this. So Mandy has her own YouTube channel called Faywood Mead, you can check her out there. Kyle is a big part of the Man Made Mead and doing the most Discord, you can find him there at Green Mountain Mead. Tony is a part of my Discord as well, he loves getting to chat about wine especially, so you can find him there, lots of links below, but thank you guys for your time and uh, I guess you can go try to make some coconut water mead now, now that you know what the result is. <laughs> So, thanks. All right, yeah, see you guys. Thanks. Thank you. Bye. Nice to meet you.